Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and in this special edition of Earth from Space, I have the pleasure of speaking with Karsten Linz, who is the global head of the Center for Digital Leadership at the software company SAP, and Josef Ashbacher, the director of ESA's Earth Observation Programs. Now, since early 2016, ESA and SAP have been collaborating on the use of satellite data. Now, Karsten, my first question to you is, why is SAP interested in using satellite data? Absolutely. Um, yeah, first and foremost, thanks for inviting me here to this very special conference uh, on Earth observation, future prospects and paradigm change. I really, uh, really feel honored to be here. Um, as the world market leader for business application software, SAP is pretty much at the center of this business and technology revolution. And we see a shift um, in many industries from product centric towards open platform-based innovation approaches, which crowdsources ideas and talent in open ecosystems. And this is fundamentally the paradigm shift that we are also seeing and that we want to leverage for driving Earth observation to the next level, because we are exposing services that others can build on. So fundamentally, we're trying to, with the combination of ESA's accurate data and SAP's powerful platform, we want to really uh, help others to innovate it might be SAP customers, partners, or entrepreneurs around the world to build the best applications and processes with the help of uh, enterprise uh, Earth observation data to make the world run better and improve people's lives. Now, since the start of this collaboration so far, what have you found to be the most interesting aspect? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I've uh, set up, uh, run, and... Uh, yeah, manage a lot of partnership, but this one is definitely a, a very special one because, um, you know, we're really complementing each other. So, so combining the power of SAP's HANA platform with a dedicated Earth observation engine, so we call it spatial engine, together with ESA's most accurate, um, timely available and highly accurate data, especially from the Copernicus program, I think this is really, yeah, a dream combination. But, and, you know, we can really build a win-win combination or constellation of that because we complement each other so nicely. And I think it's a side effect, and this is somehow yeah, surprising, as, as, as you might want to say, is that I think we found out that we can also, through our partnership, even but further accelerate the digital transformation of, of ESA uh, as, as a corporation. And we are really honored uh, to do so and to support that. Now, Yosef, I'm going to ask you the same question. Since the beginning of this cooperation, what have you found to be the most surprising element? The most surprising element is certainly, uh, first of all, uh, SAP is a very different company from what ESA is, which is an intergovernmental organization. So, uh, but SAP is a major player, a very dominant player in its domain, and is leading the market by far in many innovations which they do. At the same time, ESA is doing the same. With Copernicus, we are innovating, we are leading, we have the world's best Earth observation program which we put together. But we are different organizations or entities uh, from a governance point of view, a private company and an intergovernmental organization. So my biggest surprise was, and I was afraid when we started this partnership, that this may not work well and it may not be compatible because the, the speeds, the processes are very different maybe more simplified, more market-oriented on one side, and more government, uh, public-oriented on the other side. However, the biggest surprise was that it works extremely well, because we both need each other, we complement each other, and I think, I think this is a, is a recipe for success, because what they offer, we don't have, what we offer, SAP doesn't have, and I think this is the best combination you can have in a good cooperation. Now, what are the benefits of this cooperation for ESA? Uh, ESA is largely benefiting from this. There are two main things I would like to underline. First of all, our interest is, as an intergovernmental organization, that our data are being used by as many people as possible. SAP is a fantastic uh, customer, a fantastic uh, entity which has access to a huge number of uh, commercial companies which we don't have. And I think this is uh, certainly of interest to us, that this network of customers, of commercial customers, which SAP has, uh, is potentially using Earth observation data. The second interest, uh, which I have a bit more personally, is that SAP, one of the most modern, innovative companies in its domain, uh, is really leading uh, the challenge worldwide on cloud computing, on uh, fast processing with the HANA platform. There's a lot which ESA can learn, and I would like to learn from that. Now, of course, ESA is providing data for a wide range of applications. What sort of application areas are of interest to SAP? 
Uh, SAP is now um, addressing a number of applications. You have to ask um, my good colleague Carsten and he would be much better suited to answer. But what I think is uh, most suitable is those data which are easier to interpret and easier to read for a large variety of commercial customers. In our jargon, this is Sentinel-2 data, which are optical and infrared data. You can see a picture, uh, which is almost a photograph, but not really. But it's, really, it's very easy to, to read, to interpret, and to derive information from it. I think also Sentinel-1 radar information might be very interesting. It's a bit more difficult to, to analyze and to interpret, but potentially has huge amounts of information, which I'm sure SAP will be very interested in. Now, Karsten, so what are the application areas where you are providing data to your customers? Yeah, just to build on what Joseph said, um, kind of what we're trying to, to do is to convert big Earth observation data into smart insights and smart actions, uh, really converting into business value for our clients. Uh, and you know, we're taking the, the Earth observation data, the raw data, and want to enrich it and add uh, additional value by uh, running algorithms on the data, uh, by running historical analysis, uh, by using machine learning algorithms, but also by combining it with other data sources. So Earth observation typically is uh, resolving a major problem, but sometimes the problems are even bigger and we bring it together with other data, also of course transactional data from the SAP systems. And bringing that all together then helps to kind of solve a specific business problem or a problem of the world that we're trying to, to resolve. So two examples for that. Um, we helped uh, one of the largest reinsurance company in the world, Munich Re, to improve their claim management. They had uh, major challenges with uh, um, uh, wildfires in the US, for example, and we are now able to kind of monitor wildfires. We have all the historic data for them, but also they are able to predict the probability of wildfires, but not only the pure probability, but the probability of wildfire in combination of the assets under management. So basically, we can tell them, you know, what does it mean for their claim management on and per asset, uh, per asset basis. Another example is, and we're proud of that one because we showed it to our German Chancellor Angela Merkel and the uh, Japanese Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe uh, at CBIT. Uh, it's actually a prediction of landslides in Japan. So we were able, based on a machine learning algorithm, to predict 15 days in advance landslides in Japan. And this gives quite an opportunity not to, I mean, we cannot prevent natural disasters, unfortunately, yet, uh, but it gives a good, a fair chance to evacuate, especially kindergartens, hospitals hospitals, uh, elderly people, and identify, based on an algorithm, the perfect spot for first aid uh, center in the region. And uh, so we were very proud that the uh, feedback was very positive, and we truly will be implementing that in Japan right now, based on the data from the European Space Agency. In fact, so looking to the future, where do you see an opportunity for future collaboration with ESA? I see it in many uh, ways because uh, I think once again I really want to thank you, uh, the European Space Agency, for this uh, partnership which is grounded in mutual trust. Uh, and as I had uh, a lot of uh, partnerships in my life, this one is really special and I mean it. It's not because I'm standing here, I really mean it and I really want to say a big thank you to Joseph uh, for that. Uh, I think there's we're just at the beginning of our partnership, if you ask me personally. And I think based on what we're doing together with startups, I said, you know, we want to win more people to innovate on the great uh, stuff that we have built together, be it partners, be it SAP customers, or especially be it startups. And I think we want to create more high-tech jobs together because we innovate together with startups what we're doing, we want to extend on that and potentially you also want to make it bigger. So I think now we have a great partnership of two partners, which are really uh, leading in their respective field. But I think there are also other uh, contributors and I think we are open. We think open, we open, we think in terms of open innovation and uh, why not enhancing that and taking it to the next level. So we still have to figure out if we want to do that, if we can do that, but I think the future is relatively bright. Now the eyes in the back of my head are telling me that Josef is nodding at all this. What can you say about the future collaboration? What do you see? 
Indeed, I'm nodding because I can only confirm that the cooperation is, is excellent. And also, uh, I want to give back uh, the thanks to, to Carsten for managing extremely well within SAP. And I think we have really found trust, uh, which is always a good basis for a co a cooperation. So what do we uh, see from our side as the next steps? And in fact, we have uh, already had discussions in this direction. Uh, we certainly believe that both of us in our respective worlds, in the space world for ESA, in the, um, uh, I would say, in the uh, internet uh, uh, technology world, uh, world of SAP, uh, we can uh, attract more people, more companies, more organizations to work closer together. We would look after the space part, SAP would look after the commercial part and the IT part, uh, and really see how this can be even multiplied, not only uh, between two companies. And I think there, we are discussing at the moment how this could be done. Uh, we, uh, we, we would like to, to keep the tension high, so there might be an announcement coming in some time, not very soon, but in some time, but uh, we, are st uh, we are certainly working uh, in this direction. I think the other thing is, uh, and it was mentioned before, uh, that uh, SAP is really a leader in technology with the new uh, HANA platform, which is simply fantastic because it is uh, capable of uh, processing huge amounts of data very fast. And this is what we need uh, from a space point of view. We produce huge amounts of data and they need to be processed very fast. So I think this combination is, is really good. And there I would like to engage further in developing technologies, methods, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. There are many things to come, but uh, I agree we are just at the beginning of a very good partnership. Well, we are certainly are looking forward to the fruits of this collaboration. So, Yosef and Carson, thank you so much for joining us today. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space or about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int.